Keanu Reeves, how's it going? Scott Adkins, it's going good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm very well. Thanks for doing this, Keanu. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. I'm a fan of the show. I'm a fan of yours. And uh, I'm really honored to get a chance to uh, speak about the art of action. The art of action. Well, Keanu Reeves, you are an action legend. Point Break, Speed, More Matrix, Four John Wick. And that doesn't even include all the other films you've done. You've done so much in the action genre, my friend. I just want to say, first of all, thanks so much for all the entertainment, for all the action fans. You really have gone above and beyond, and we appreciate it. Well, I appreciate that. I, um, it's funny, it's hard. I don't, yeah, I don't feel like I've, I'm any kind of, I don't know, in terms of being like in action and like, it's kind of you to say those very nice things, but I don't feel like, I don't feel like I've earned this. No, but I'm here to tell you as a fellow action capadre, you have, and that you are one of the best to ever do it. Now, I don't, I know you don't want to accept this because you are a very humble man, but I'm telling you, you're one of the best to ever do it. The quality of the action films that you've made. And, you know, I know how difficult it is to do the action because I do it. It is hard work, man. And I don't think the audience really understands how difficult it is to do all these martial arts action sequences. I've been involved with some great filmmakers and um, stories and characters. And, uh, you know, I think, I mean, anyway, I'll just say that, you know, I, I've, it's been great. I, I love action. I love doing it, um, and yes, it is. It does. It's it is demanding, as you know. I mean, you're you're fighting ten hours a day, if not more. And but but isn't that what's fun about it, Scott? I'm gonna say no. <laughs> no, it's play, man. I mean, it's play. We're just getting anyway. Let's let's yeah. get in. So, first of all, did you do any martial arts or athletic endeavors when you were younger? Um, not any martial arts i did um i think i took one aikido class when i was like 14 or something okay yeah uh, when they started that, doing that's all john wick the aikido loving that <laughs> yeah yeah but i took one class and thought this isn't for me um all the hip stuff and the floor why anyway but i played a lot of sports so i, I grew up in toronto canada and i played a lot of ice hockey played basketball so i was on the high school basketball team came to a point where i was um, i had to try out for a, a league that's one below pro so i was okay i guess martial arts like so many people was influenced like my stepfather took me to go see enter the dragon when i was a kid in times square in new york yeah. double Sure. Enter the dragon, five fingers of death. Oh, yeah. And so that was inspiring. I mean, I think, you know, as a kid, you know, we had chess fights, we played war. Um, you know, we did roof jumping, you know, where you jump from yeah. one building and then jump over like a, a laneway and then jump. Well, this was before parkour roofs. was even invented. So you were, yeah, ahead of yeah. So we would go out and just go roof jumping. You know, and then we're doing t chestnut fights. You know, we're playing hockey, street hockey. So I was a really physical kid. Um, and then growing up, I was taking some fencing. Uh, so yeah. I was doing foil. Okay. And then, That's unusual. Yeah, with foil. I mean, I really liked fencing. Yeah. And then uh, and then doing some movement, dance classes, and stuff. And then theater. You know, I started studying, so there was all the stage fighting, and I just really enjoyed that. You know, I enjoyed the physicality of the character, um, whether it was, you know, pretend, you know, playing on the streets, you know, like when you're playing war, chess fights, there's a kind of imagination going on into the physicalization. You're constructing stories, whether it's our tribe, us versus them. You know, you're, you're playing. Yeah. So that idea of character 
and physicalization, dramatic conflict, was felt very organic to me and was a place where I liked to play. Well, when you got into the theatre then and, you know, movies, TV, however, once you started, did you have any aspirations at that point when you first started to become an action star or did all this just happen by accident? I don't know. I mean, a lot, some of my early roles like were physical and I didn't have an ambition. I mean, I loved action. I loved action movies, but yeah. Um, you know, like as a kid, you know, there was all the kind of Hong Kong Kung Fu movies. Yeah. You know, the snake style, dragon yeah. style. Blue Brothers stuff. You know, psh, 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 oh, psh, psh. That's it. And the sound effects as well. Yeah, that's what it was about, you know? And, and uh, really, my big break was point break. Keanu Reeves. And you think I joined the FBI to learn to surf? Point break. Adios, amigo! I have to say, it's one of my personal all time favorite movies. I think it's a phenomenal action movie. It's more than an action movie, though. It's got like a got soul to it. It's got something else going on. It's got like that surf vibe and everything. I believe that Catherine Bigelow really fought for you to get, to get the part, right? Because people were struggling to see you as an action guy at that point. Do you think? You think <laughs> you said, like Ted Theodore Logan from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure in an action movie? <laughs> yeah, no, or, I, yeah. I, I can't blame them for questioning it. It's not something that's like, oh yeah, let's have Keanu Reeves in an action movie. But, um, but yeah, she fought for me and it changed my life. Listen, Bunker, I'm actually really glad you found me. Yeah? Why? Uh, hey! Uh, 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 hey, uh, hey uh, man! Uh, 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 stunt coordinator, Glenn Wilder. Legendary Hollywood stunt director, performer. He really... He really championed me doing as much as I could, you know, like whatever it was, whether it was in the fights or like running or he was just like, come on, you could do it. And at the same time, it introduced me to the weapons. So all of the training with the weapons. Um, yeah, because this film starts out with the shooting rays, doesn't it? And Rain, so. Yeah, so I got to work with a guy named Randy Walker on that, and it was just, it was, it was just really, it was cool just to be doing the, the fight scenes, the running, the jumping, the weapons, and uh, so it really laid the groundwork for everything that would kind of move forward in that. I mean, this for me, still to this day. Oh yeah, running and jumping. Running and jumping, yeah. This is still, in my opinion, one of the, the best foot chase that I can think of. You know, Catherine Bigelow really was in the spirit of trying to bring the action and the characters together. And, yeah. And, and had such an like, energy and vitality to the cinema and to, to what she wanted to do. Um, and bring the audience into and the foot chase you know she was using like pogo cam um shot on film running through here That's i remember what, I was gonna say. Well, what, is, what is a pogo cam then because this is really interesting camera work for the time yeah for the time you know of course the cam had been used but the the camera bodies that were used on them were were pretty big and so they had this kind of smaller steady cam setup, but they had a smaller film body, camera body. And so that's how they're getting these really low angles. Yeah, low angles, but also being able to run fast enough and to kind of keep up with us. Well, the thing about it is, I mean, I've done a few of these chase scenes, and if you're not warmed up, you're going to pull a hammy because you're giving it everything you got there. Um, yeah, yeah, and that was cool because we, we, you know, as you know, sometimes you have to kind of fake run fast. Yeah, yeah, which is horrible. Run fast because the camera operator can't keep up. Yeah. With the logo cam, you know, the operator was able to really kind of go at speed. Um, 
Yeah. Is that you getting over there, Keanu? I don't... No, that wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay, because I think we need to talk about the relationship between the actor and your stunt double. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an important relationship, and it's... The stunt performer, when they're great, is matching you and and moving, trying to move how you move. And I've had, you know, really great experiences with that kind of like, how do we move? How do we do this? So this is actually a day that Glenn Wilder was like, come on. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah, like, just like, go for it. Go. <laughs> you did go for it. Yeah, and it's just like, it's just fun. And, um, well, you know what? I think that's my stunt double. No, he looks so much like you. Yeah, which is cool. You know, <laughs> okay. Part of that. No I way. Actually, be me. That actually. is you. Oh, yeah, that is me. That is you. So you padded up, you can't remember. You padded up, you don't remember. Oh, no, that guy, no, he was like saying, like, go for it. Like, just go. And I was like, okay. Um, it's so long ago, Scott. But yes, yeah, it's just trying to like, but that's, but you know, this is great to talk about because it's, it is that relationship between what you can do and where the stunt performer and who's doubling you takes over and the filmmaker, you know, trying to, to keep the audience involved so there isn't this connect where you're, you're going, you're staying in the action. So Glenn Wilder is like, go Reeves. And I'm like trying to do it. The stunt double is trying to see what the situation is and kind of move the same way. And when all elements come together, you get something that's captivating and something that feels rich. You've got a very unique movement about you that's specific to you as well. So a stuntman will have to pick up the, the, oh, they gotta... the Reeves run. They kind of lumbering. <laughs> you can do it. But I mean, I, I really went into that film so happy and so excited and so wanting to do everything I could, you know? And, yeah. And I had a stunt coordinator that was on board with, and I had a filmmaker who wanted us to do that and knew how to do the choreography, where to put the camera. Um, stunt performer that was you know looking to match and was into it and supportive as well that's why it's important for you to do as much as you can yourself so the audience sees it's you and, and keeps a connection to you as that character and doesn't get pulled out of it by seeing a stuntman which of course we use but as much as you can do yeah as much as you can do um there's yeah. moments it's cool well anyway yes yes how was it working with Swayze? Yeah, well, I mean, he's a legend. Such a wonderful human being and such a total pro. And someone who is also, let's go, let's go. You know, I looked up to him and he set such a great example for, for me and to everybody on the set of just total pro, talent, passion. And, um, and so this fight sequence is very cold water. Um, was this in America? Because not Australia, right? Yeah, no, it was in America. And uh, we shot this sequence. This was actually a reshoot for an, an ending. Um, so we got back together and fought in this 50 degree. Well, I'd love to know what the original ending was. Uh, I think they wanted to tie it. It, it, was, it wasn't quite... Um, I don't recall. Why? Right. But it was has grown much longer, obviously. So it's quite a few months later. Yeah. And so she, Catherine Bigelow shot this sequence. And then also um, a little beforehand got Patrick Swayze actually jumping out of the airplane and skydiving. Right. Um, but we were good. We, had, we, we worked well together, I thought, in terms of, you know, partnering and rhythm and uh, going for it. Yeah. Because he was really back. experienced with the yeah. fighting at this point. Those are some good, solid, like, you know, movie yeah. fighting. Well, he gives you yeah. a real good kick in a minute. But he would, like, Roadhouse, for me, is a brilliant fight. Look at that. Yeah. 
So he was very experienced. He gives you a good one there. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, he's barefoot, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a good solid fight. And so you enjoyed the process of having a good scrap. Yeah, you know, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. And I, and I think, and I think also with Point Break, action was so tied. It's always tied to character, of course. But um, I didn't know how much an important that was. That, that or, felt organic to me. Like, what's my character? Okay, this is a fight. And as you so well know, um, you know, conflict or those kinds of action moments reveal character, right? You get, you're fighting for your life. You're fighting for something. Um, and so to be actually to be there and see the faces and to have those interactions is what makes it so good and connected to not only in the story, but also with the audience. And Patrick Swayze was all about it. And everyone who I was working with, Catherine Bigelow as a filmmaker, Glenn Wilder as a stunt coordinator, all of the other actors who got on board with it, um, that really was my primary learning experience of what's important and what, what is good, you know. And Patrick Swayze is just such a righteous human being and talented artist. So to see that commitment, I mean, I had it, but also to see it from a legend, you know, yeah. it's like, I mean, Patrick, during the course of, of Point Break, started to sky high, and he started to bring it everyone in the tribe and his tribe from the movie skydiving so they're all like not working and they're jumping out of airplanes and eventually production gave patrick swayze a cease and desist because he kept jumping out of airplanes <laughs> and they're like no we're making a movie you can't just go jump out of air and so when filming was um, completed catherine piccolo got patrick and a cameraman they went up the plane and then once production was over and then they had Patrick jump out of an airplane. And so he did all those flips in the sky. Before the filming, I went and I jumped like I, I wanted to know what that was about. So I went to Paris out here in um, California and uh, took one of those uh, one day accelerated programs because I wanted to pull my own shoot. So you, said, okay. you jumped at 12.5. And you got to jump to flight master masters, and so I got to do it once. I just wanted to know what it was about to jump out of the plane and you know get the arc, um, yeah. the arch, and um, and so we did that. But then when we filmed for the sequence between he and I, between Bogey and John, yeah. Johnny uh, Hita, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jones, jump yeah, back, here, John. For good airplane, Johnny. Yeah. Um, it was just. It was cool because I'd had that experience and Patrick had had that experience. So just physically, we yeah. knew how to move that, you know, in the situation of uh, recreating it. So you must have done a lot of surfing, obviously. It was something that off before that. I forgot yeah. about the surfing. Yeah. And so what this introduced to me too was just, you know, in that tradition of like, if you're going to play a role, go learn about what you have to do in a film. And we get to learn such new skills, you yeah. know, and. And in Point Break, it was the surfing, and um, I, you know I had never surfed, so I got really good at falling, and, and which that was okay because your character needed to do that. Yeah, but there was a couple of there was, I remember one out when we were filming. It was like a couple. Of, there was a wave that I was just like I was supposed to fall. I was like, no, this wave's really. <laughs> so I just like surfed in. It was fun. But Derek Dorner, I remember talking to, and he's like, he's a, you know, one of the time, one of the greatest, you know, longboard, big wave surfers. And he's like, yeah, man, it's playing with my head because I spend my whole life not falling. All I think about is not falling. And then now I got to go fall. So you see him surfing, and it scoots off the board. And I hear he, he had some damage to his eardrum. 
Ну, давай. Tell me again, Harry. Why did I take this job? Oh, come on. 30 more years of this, you get a tiny pension and a cheap gold watch. Cool. Speed is another one of the best action films ever made. Keanu, how do you pick him? So Jan de Bont directed Speed. He was the cinematographer on Die Hard. So if anyone had an excuse to rip off a Die Hard plus, it was him. It was him. Yeah. And I mean, I remember getting the script and going, this is ridiculous. And then thinking about it and thinking, well, that's actually what's really cool about it too. I mean, I mean, I just, I had come from a film where there's like, you know, bank robbing surfers. Now it's like a bus that can't go over, what was it, 55 or 50? I forget. 50, I think. Yeah, 50. Yeah. And, uh. But it's a great idea. It's one of those elevator pitch films, isn't it? Where you can just say it in one sentence and you're like, oh, that's, that's great. Bus, the bus goes over 50, arms the bomb. If it slows down, it blows up. Blows up. Yeah. And so it was, it was fun to get into. And, and, uh, and I liked the idea of Jack Travin as a guy who wanted to do good. You know, like he wanted, I, I thought of him as a guy who, Growing up, he like became a cop or went into this because he wanted to do, but he wanted to see. So when I, when I was thinking about speed, I was like, okay, you know, I started to know the SWAT guys. I was like, I'm going to get a military haircut. So I cut all my hair off. And then they were like, what have you done? Get I remember this. It was in all the, the newspapers in the UK. Keanu Reeves has, has given himself a crew cut and the studio aren't happy about it. <laughs> all yeah, this. I, it was funny. But again, yeah, I got you to set go back. a bit of a trend, I think. Everyone, like, because I remember being a teenager and that coming out and everyone was going out and getting the same haircut. Oh. I had the same shirt. I thought, oh, that's the speed shirt. I'm going to get one of them. You know, what was cool is I actually went and got that wardrobe. I picked I, like, I actually went oh, yeah. to the on that Jack. But, um, because I wanted to, you know, he lived out in Santa Monica. Anyway, so I jumped in. When I worked on Speed, I, I kind of got back into something that I, I really enjoyed, which was all the weapons training and the tactics and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I got to work with a really wonderful stunt coordinator again in Gary Himes and Gary at that time I think what was cool was then for me that's where I ran into technology helping putting actors in places where they normally wouldn't be um with wire support for stuff all under the bus with how to think about doing the bus and be on it like a little trolley, I have to, you know, the character has to go into the, try and, you know, defuse the bomb. Yeah. And, you know, there was the jump from the car to the bus. And did you do that? I did it, but when I did it, I did it underneath some shadow. And then the stunt had a little platform, but they didn't like it in between the car and the bus. So then they did it with uh, a professional, and uh, which who I believe is Brian Smurz. He looks exactly like you. I was watching. Yeah. That. Again, that stunt yeah. double relationship. Did you enjoy the driving side of things? Yeah, I got to do the driving. At the time, the, uh, what was, it was the 105 freeway was being built. So we filmed on this freeway that was being constructed. So we had the whole thing to ourselves. Right. Um, but in working with Gary... You know, that's where I got introduced to like, here are the toys and you're looking at like little Tonka toys and you're like, okay, this is your pattern. Drive here, then through here, you're going to see this red car and then a white car. There it is. Um, but it's, you know, just getting into the world of how these things are built, how these sequences are designed um, was really fun. Yeah. So I believe that's Brian. I hope I don't get that wrong. You're pretty buff in this film. Were you hitting the gym a lot? 
I actually worked with the same trainer for who I met on Point Break, uh, named Denise Snyder, and she worked with me on Point Break and then worked with me on Speed. Uh, I was my home base at that time was Gold's Gym in Venice. It's fun when you start to get in shape and you start to like start pushing your maxes and stuff, you know. And I do yeah. like when a bench press when you put another plate, on, you know, and you just yeah. Like, how much do you bench? It's just like, when you push it, but it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great experience to feel in shape and to. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy uh, weight training, but I do find as I get older, it's uh, got to be careful with the, with the injuries and keeping the mobility. I got very stiff at one point from just getting too big and I lost the mobility in the upper body. And yeah, for it's sure. not good for the martial arts. It doesn't go hand in hand. I no, know. well, I didn't have to worry about that, Scott, because who wasn't not doing any martial arts. Not then. Which brings us to... Yeah, you came back with, you know, arguably the greatest action film ever made yet again. Now, let me ask something very important. How many months did you train in martial arts before you started shooting? I met with the Wachowskis and I loved the script and they had some, they showed me um, a previs from Bullet Time, which was extraordinary. And one of the things that they talked about in the meeting with them was it would be training and, and the idea of the Hong Kong style martial arts. And they were like, are you okay with that? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, but it's four months. And I was like, yeah, that sounds okay. See, the only problem was I was dealing with a neck issue. Yeah. So, and it was getting worse. I had spent a couple of years kind of fighting it off. I had, I was getting tingling and, um, I had done a, a film before then called chain reaction in Chicago. And it was, I had, had a couple, um, uh, epidurals put in, you know, shot it, shot up in the spine to, to kind of, was it because you had a bulging disc up there or? Yeah, exactly. So it turned out that it it was, I had a bulging disc and then I had a disc that fractured and was poking in. So basically I was losing, but then I was starting to lose my balance. And so I said yes to the matrix and the four months of training. Um, but it was getting pretty bad. So I went to a neck doctor and, uh, basically I had stenosis in my spinal column. Yeah. So I, and, and then I had the, the bulge and then I had this. So my spinal cord was being sausage basically. Um, which isn't good. And so before I went into the training of the four months, I had to have a, a two level fusion. So they pulled all the discs out and put a plate in my neck. Uh, C5, six, six, seven. Um, there were two, a few plates or just one. Yeah, it was a two level fusion, one plate in the front of my neck. Okay. And, uh, well, so you, you lost flexibility then in the neck. Well, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, um, and so what happened was I went to see the, um, a wonderful surgeon named Ian Armstrong and he was, I told him, he goes, well, what do you have to do? And I said, well, I have to do this um, film. I have to work. And he was like, well, what do you have to do? And I said, well, there's martial arts. And it turns out he a, was a martial artist. But he's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I have to make this movie. I want to have surgery. And I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> Did you not tell anyone because you didn't want them to say, oh, you can't do the film? Yeah. I did the same thing on the film. 
But what was cool was at that time, the idea of how to recover from spinal surgery was different. Um, and it wasn't just incapacitated. It was like, I'm going to put this plate in your neck and then you need to start moving. You need to protect it. Anyway, you can see footage where I'm training for the matrix and I'm wearing a neck brace. Yeah. I had, I, I had to protect. I couldn't, especially this way, I still protect it. Well, did that affect how many times you get punched in the face or anything? Was that ever a concern? Oh, you can't react too much. Uh, yeah. 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 Because there would be stuff when I was training and it would, I would go, I, I mean, I was, I was doing all I could, but there was underneath, you know, a little fear. And especially when I would feel it go. Yeah. I, you know, my blood would just drain out of me and I would just like, yeah i because it could all go away and yeah yeah i had a acl reconstruction and mentally it just took so long for me to accept that it was gonna be okay even when i think it was okay i, I still couldn't i was still just protecting it for a couple of years later it's hard to trust it isn't it it is yeah it is. and i still protect it and if you if you look at my reactions in the head shots in the matrix and all of the films i you know no i didn't notice i didn't notice i don't I, know anything about I it hold, i hold it a little bit but and i didn't have to do a lot of like you know taking snap hits and stuff like that. yeah so we would train we would stretch for about two hours um really and it got really super intense you know like really you know you have you know, you sit across from someone and they push your legs out. Yeah. You know, you put the oh, sandbags man. at the end of your feet. You just sit, you know, you go into the frog and they push down on your hips. Bah, you get popped. You know, you're, you know like ready, like, you gotta eat something. Pop. You know, God, getting... I don't know about the popping. I've done martial arts all my life. I've never had the popping. Jesus. Wait. Bah. When you, you, when you were stretching, you net, never had anyone like just, no, <laughs> that's how you pull a hammy, isn't it? No, that's how you get. It's it's really? Hong Kong style. That's Chinese, Hong Kong style. It's mar, It's Chinese martial arts style. So the, okay. the stretching was legit. You know the legs on the bars. So it was fun because it was all of us together: Hugo Weaving, Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Ann Moss. Every morning we kind of would go to. We would well, not come. Kind of, went to training. You know, all right, get your leg up, you know, and you start stretching. Um, and, and then we would do the wushu. So, yes, kicking, you know, uh -huh. uh, side kicks. And, and then we would start doing, you know, basic punching and kicking. And, and then they would start to introduce choreography. So, uh, it's very bold of the directors to insist. Would that be something, I mean, with the, obviously Joel Silver was completely on board with this, but at the time it was unheard of, right? To take actors and train them for that many months. But there was no yeah. other way to do it, right? Yeah, there was just, I think, I think it's, I mean, obviously actors have been training for, for action since filming, you know, we've been making movies. I think this was like the new wave of Right. So it was, it was, you know, because the other element that got added was the wire work. Yes. Um, yeah. So the Hong Kong style of training and filming, use of wires, martial art, choreography, um, and then bringing actors in to train. Yeah. It was, but again, I had come from point break and speed. And so I, I understood learning new things to go into a film, to go bring your character to the action and, and the filmmakers to bring this all together. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I was all in. Well, this was the first fight sequence that we did uh, in the film. This was the kind of the first, like, Wachowski act. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so even there, you know, I just had to turn my head a little bit. I loved doing all the forms and 
through a little Bruce Lee in here. Yeah. Up Had to do a little bit. <laughs> did you enjoy the Y or did you find it very uncomfortable? You, did you like it? I did like it. I mean, I, I had some great teachers, Tiger Chen, who, um, you know, and also this is where I first started work with Chad Stahelski. Yeah. Um, so I think that's all at 24. It's Chad. Good. That's me. Adaptation. <laughs> but uh, I mean, when you saw the set and when we would watch play back, I mean, the production just. It's just so good. I mean, I love the wire work. I liked the triple kick. Um, I like the, the run up, the beam, which I think is coming. Yes. Yeah. I love the fact that you do a jump spinning back here. Right? That's great. Right. Wow. It's a little, I mean, look at that. If you hadn't seen that before, you're the power powder. Oh, power powder. Yeah, power powder. Oh, power powder. Hong Kong power powder. Yeah. Makes everything look cooler. It just looks so good. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how much Lawrence and I just worked on this. So I, would you say that this is shot at 22, some of this, or 23? I can't say for certain, because I at that time I wasn't saying how I came to learn about that. I mean, I knew that they were about 23 and 22. I think for the most part, we shot 24. There's even there's a, a sequence at the end where I come flying at him with the hands. I wanted to give like that crazy, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but like, here's my, <laughs> <laughs> like in the status of it, like, Neo's kind of losing confidence here. Well, this is great work by uh, Lawrence here. The sidekick bit, I like this. You like the sidekick. He also like, likes, he made a little contact. <laughs> oh yeah. Which I like. Good. Oh. Yeah, it's good. It's good. That's All brilliant right. stuff, top shots. So this movement here, I just wish that I didn't see my hands like pushing off on the wire to rotate around. Yeah. I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't push off the wires to kind of, I wish I had held that better to get my momentum over. But Americans have never seen anything like this at the time. I mean, if you're a fan of Hong Kong cinema, okay, you had mind blown. But for me, when I, when I saw the matrix, it was the first time I'd seen a Hollywood film that com could compete with what I was seeing in Hong Kong cinema. And I thought to myself, okay, this is it now. Hollywood's finally caught up with Hong Kong. And uh, away we go. And then the, the, the Bourne movie came out with the shaky cam and it kind of, that became the new style. And it, it was kind of upsetting to me, to be honest, because mm -hmm. this is so beautifully shot. Well, the Wachowski shoot the action so elegantly. And I think what they were doing here too was the longer takes, obviously. You know, let's see. Let's see everything that's going on. You know, let's not cut in and out. But I mean, the Bourne movies had a different thing going on, like for what they were doing more to man to man, modern fighting. I mean, I think the shaky cam work, especially for that those films. Um, it's when everybody else started to do it, but it was a kind of shorthand, maybe cheaper way to do it. I think it became an easier way to disguise the shortcomings of the performers. A one yeah. point. I think Greengrass and, you know, that the first Bourne movie it isn't shaky cam, to be honest, but Greengrass definitely had the shaky cam and that was his style. That is his style. I think Wait, the first Bourne movie didn't have shaky cam? Well, it was not it as bad. Quite nuts and they, they did wide and tight. Yeah. Okay. Cuts. For me, right, when, when the, when, you need to understand the geography of a fine scene, don't you? So when the cameras are all over the place, and you're cut into them and they're all over the place. You, you lose like sense of who's fighting who. For me, it's important to keep the one guy on that side of the screen and the other guy on that side of the screen. And we're, we're on the right side of the, uh, what do you call it? The line. Uh, and then when you jump the line, stay there for a little bit. But when you're jumping and coming back and jumping around and you just lose focus on, on who's fighting who and what's going on. 
that for me is a big problem. Because they jump the line a lot in like we ping in, in that jump jumps the line a lot, but then for he'll sure. stay there for long enough for your brain to get used to it. So I think that's the issue. Yeah. That's my theory. I think so. I mean, I think it's interesting. I think it's like when it's an abuse or if it's not being organically used and not really understood, but as an effect sometimes, yeah, it can be disorienting. And I mean, if you're on a one-on-one fight in a room and you're kind of jumping around there, or if it travels a bit, um, I, I mean, I, I get that. I think it all, it's also an effective an effective editing style it can yeah now how much was do we disagree disagree? or do you because i think i need to hear you say yes it can be effective and oh no yes yes it's listen you 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 know you know keanu you you've done many more of these movies i i i like the born movies greengrass did i think they're brilliant and i think he did it the best Yes. But there are some films where it's it ridiculous me insane, and it drives me insane. I, I, I can't agree to disagree. <laughs> I think I agree. I agree with you then. That yes. When it's done well, it's, it's awesome. When it's done well. Yes. For the, for the right reasons. But I think we got, it got so easy just to like shake the camera about and edit quickly just to kind of cover up the fact that it, it kind of wasn't working. I think yes. that happened a few times. I, but the wow. point is, when the Matrix came out and we saw that Hong Kong style, it was a beautiful thing, man. I remember being in the cinema and seeing that and just being so blown away. One of the best action films I've ever seen. And that moment, I remember being in the cinema, that moment when Neo looks at the stairs and he thinks about running and then he looks back at Smith and he comes. I remember standing up in my seat going, Come on! I was loving it. It was brilliant. Still is brilliant. Yeah, he does what Morpheus did to him. Come on. Yeah. I was getting hit so much. I got a, a pad made to the shape of my chest because I was just getting so fucking. Yeah. Just... Well, yeah, because you've got like a tight top on, so you can't really. Yeah, yeah, so it was just super tight. Didn't wear it all the time, but I just remember, I don't even know if I kept it, but I, I had it done because it was just... We well, just want to point something out here that amazes me. Look how close he is to your face here. Yeah. That is close. So this is where I learned about super perfect. <laughs> yeah. And so when we would do, like with that punch, if they would slow stuff down, if it was, it would, because when you do time like that, they would be, look how far away you are. I'm like, you can't, but it's real. I'm looking at it in slow motion. And they're like, anyway. Um, yeah. Is that so, Hugo or is that? Yeah, that's true. Right. So he must have been pretty nervous that he's going to hit you in the face because he's having to go for where your head is. No, it's okay. I'm outside his shoulder. It's actually, yeah. I, I'm way there. He was great. Oh, he did a phenomenal job. Everyone did a phenomenal job. Because, yeah, it's not easy doing these fights. The, the, you don't see the takes that didn't make the cut. Yeah. Yeah. How many days would you shoot a fight like this? Uh, uh, subway. Because there's a bunch of different things. I want to say like five. Five? I would have thought it'd be more than that. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to remember. That was a good kick. Yeah. Oh, and so also in this fight here, I was like, hey man, we did three wire kicks. Let's go for four. I think it's coming. The, the, the kicks like that in, in this scene. Power powder. Brilliant. Power powder, yeah. <laughs> I keep saying Young Wu Ping because... I'm, I'm obviously seeing his influence all over the, the fight scenes. How much were the Wachowskis in, in, involved in that then? Or did they let Wu Ping do his thing? I think they let Wu Ping do his thing and then they would take and then add their own flavor to it. 
I mean, they, they had studied him and knew his work inside and And I yeah. think, um, you know, Yuan Lu Ping was doing the choreography and I would say, I would say both. I mean, it definitely the choreography is Yuan Lu Ping. I think with the camera placement, they were, they would kind of refer with him, but I think they had their own take on it. Well, I love this. I love it when it can work on a side angle like that, like you're punching him on the side of the face, which is harder to do. And there's more risk of, you know, actually hitting him. But the yeah. fact that you're seeing it from the side profile angle, I, I, I love that. Headbutts are tricky too. This one. Wow. Well, there's, there's the four kick. They had to do the, the cutaway for the fourth one. Good sidekick, Keanu. Yeah, it's okay. No, phenomenal stuff. Five, five days then, just five days. I would have thought it'd be more than that. I can't really say that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I want to say that. That was actually a gnarly hit for the stunt performer. Yeah. He actually got caught when he hit the ground. Well, he almost died. Really? Oh, God. Yeah. I think what John Wick action is, obviously it's longer takes. I think they went to my strength. It, it's the idea of incorporating multiple things at the same time, right? So being able to grab someone and integrate throws with a pistol became um, food. You know, being able to hit someone with a car became car food. Dog food. And dog food. And I think that's a signature of it. Oh my God, this Mark Dacascos is coming up. So the first time that I have the interaction with Donnie, it's with the sword and they had all of this choreography and I went to do it and it was just, once the sword came out, I was just, whoa, because he went into like fucking blender mode. 